and uh, the recording will be sent to uh, all of the people who have registered for this webinar. Um, and secondly, is as and when uh, you have any questions during this webinar, feel free to use the chat window there that you will see on your uh, GoToMeeting. Please type in the questions and towards the end of this presentation, I will be reviewing these questions and trying to answer them one after the other. So whenever you have a question during this presentation, I strongly urge you to just type them in um, in the chat window. Okay, with this, we're going to, um, just a few more per people just joining in, um, okay, so, and uh, hence we, uh, we just commence uh, this presentation. Okay. All right, let's look at the agenda for today. We start with just a brief introduction of what solenoids are um, and second is we will examine um, the challenges that, uh, that take place in, in designing a solenoid and, and simulating one um, and then we will examine uh, closely how this is really a, some kind of a multiphysics problem that involves electromagnetics as well as motion, probably more but at least the bare minimum of these two. Um, and then we will take a look at how EMS approaches the simulation of solenoids and we will obviously take a look at the advantages in this approach and uh, I will be showing you a complete product demonstration using a live solenoid, um, a real uh, live solenoid in this webinar and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the EMS products and finally um, we will have uh, sufficient time to answer all of your questions. Um, just as a reminder for people who just uh, tuned in, um, uh, you, can, uh, you can use the uh, chat window to type in the questions as and when you uh, feel a need to answer, ask a question. Okay? And I'll be, uh, towards the end of this presentation, I'll review each one of them. Uh, before I commence, uh, there is a special offer from EMWorks that I would like to mention in this webinar. As a token of appreciation for registering and attending today's webinar, we're going to offer you our uh, solenoid package, which is EMS magnetic motion, along with the maintenance for the first year for a price of $12,000. That's about a $3,000 off on the list price of $15,000. Okay. Um, obviously, there's a timeline to this offer, um, and uh, you need to act by August 31st, uh, 2016. Um, if you want any further information on this, uh, I encourage you to shoot an email to sales at emworks.com or my colleague Adam is um, will be happy to answer your call um, and his phone number is there. Uh, please mention the EMS August webinar offer so that they can um, they can help you out uh, with that. Okay. With that I'm going to just uh, proceed to the uh, technical part and the real part of today's webinar. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what typically solenoids are you know in short, when you just say, what is a solenoid, it's, it's some kind of an electromagnet. When I mean by electromagnet, it is, there's no permanent magnetization in it. You have a coil and you pass current through a coil and it creates a magnetic field. And that's, in short, a very um, fast definition of what an electromagnet is. Um, and obviously, um, can be made a super strong magnet. And it's uh, very useful, uh, the solenoid uh, in general is a, is, a, is a very useful device with a plethora of applications. Now let's look at some of the applications that, um, that, uh, that the industry uses solenoid for. So we talk about locks, uh, we'll start with the mechanical applications, so any kind of locks, valves, etc. They're more mechanical applications. There are some electrical applications which are used in machines like H MRI machine, then there is hard disk drives, um, acoustic applications like speakers, microphones, etc. And obviously solenoid um, uh, is, is a device that features across various industries from automotive, aerospace, defense chemicals, etc. So solenoid is, uh, I would say, quite a ubiquitous um, device um, uh, as far as um, uh, engineering is concerned. So it probably deserves a special treatment and hence the topic for today's webinar. 
So in general, uh, you know, if I just sum it up, uh, solenoid, you know, um, can turn any kind of electrical impulse or uh, energy into some type of movement. And, and each of these devices that you see here is, is doing just that. It takes an electrical energy either in the form of a DC energy supplied through a battery or a, an, an AC energy for, through the mains, etc. Uh, it takes in some kind of electrical energy and then it produces out a movement. Okay. If you take a speaker into uh, consideration, it takes in uh, electrical signals and then it vibrates so that converts electrical energy some form of a, a vibration or a movement, okay. a kinetic energy if I may say. Now let's look at some of the challenges that uh, engineers typically face uh, uh, while simulating or designing solenoids. Um, the, one of the things that they would like to know is what are the forces acting on especially the movable part. Okay, due to the electromagnet or due to uh, any kind of excitation of the coil. Um, then once you know this force, um, you have to predict its motion. It's, it's basically the motion characteristics. Uh, uh, what I mean by that is, is how does the displacement vary as a function of time? How does the velocity, acceleration, etc. vary as a function of time? Okay, that's predicting the motion after obtaining the force. Then um, you, you can go one step a little further um, uh, to examine closely on the physics of what's going on. You can take a look at the magnetic flux density and the field intensity, etc. The magnetic uh, field distribution uh, inside the domain of your problem or, or in and around the solenoid, if I may say. Um, also electrical engineers might be interested in predicting back EMFs, what is the flux linkage. Um, and things associated with solenoids. So these are some of the typical challenges and these are some of the um, some of the questions that engineers want to answer while doing some kind of an advanced uh, treatment or simulation on a solenoid uh, design. Now really as you uh, as I speak uh, you might be wondering well this this there's electrical energy obviously there is uh, uh, an electrical signal or an uh, um, or, or a source that produces some kind of movement and, and hence we're really talking about two branches of physics here. The motion obviously is, is kinematics and dynamics really the Newtonian type of physics um, and uh, the electrical part of it, the electromagnetism, the Maxwell, um, that's, that's an electricity, electrical uh, type of physics. So really talking about two different types of physics So and, and they're coupled with each other and hence uh, this is a classical multiphysics type of problem, right? Well, what I mean through it is the current through the coil, it generates a field and this magnetic field exerts a force on the movable part. Now this force obviously creates, uh, due to Newton's second law of motion, some kind of acceleration, hence a, hence a pattern of movement. Um, now this motion uh, cuts a ferromagnetic substance through um, I would say a magnetic field, uh, it, it, it cuts the magnetic flux lines and hence um, that induces some kind of a back EMF which is again a concept that, that is there and also as you notice here that the model is not static or stationary. What I mean by this is there is movement and hence the magnetic field is not constant. It varies with a function of time. So you would actually need a program that takes care of all of these physics uh, to give you the right way uh, or, or to simulate uh, and predict the motion of a solenoid. And that's, uh, hence, uh, it requires a treatment involving more than one type of physics. Now let's see what is the EMS or the software that uh, EMWorks produces. Um, what is its approach to solenoid simulation? Now the approach, I've just uh, categorized them as uh, some kind of block diagram here. Uh, the first step obviously involves creating the geometry. So obviously today uh, many engineers they use uh, 3D CAD like SOLIDWORKS etc. to create uh, the geometry. So the 3D geometry is created. Okay. Once the 3D geometry is created, now it's ready for some kind of a simulation. So, so you can actually study the magnetic field uh, due to an excitation of a coil. And uh, that is done using uh, EMS as you see here. Now this magnetic field produces a force and this force is also computed by EMS and now this force has to be transferred to a program that does kinematics and dynamics and that's where uh, SOLIDWORKS motion comes into play. 
um, the EMS being an integrated environment inside uh, SOLIDWORKS CAD uh, will actually uh, work with uh, uh, the, the geometry as well as the motion component of uh, SOLIDWORKS. So now this SOLIDWORKS motion produces obviously takes in the force and respects other things. There may be springs, dampers, uh, contacts, etc. in your model. It respects all of them and it produces a motion. Now this motion updates, uh, when I mean motion, that's actually in a very small um, period of time. And now there is a new position or uh, let's call it a new geometry. Uh, and now this new geometry requires analysis. And this is a loop that keeps going um, till you uh, till the time ends or, or till you ask it to uh, do so basically um, what are the outputs that are possible obviously from the electromagnetic part of it you can get 3d plots you can get back EMF the magnetic flux density the field intensity the forces etc and also from the perspective of motion you can get many motion characteristics like how does my displacement to your center of mass displacement the velocity acceleration how does those vary with uh, time? If you have spring, what's the spring force and how does the spring force vary with time and so on. Okay, um, So this is pretty much the EMS approach uh, to solenoid simulation or any kind of multiphysics problem that involves um, uh, electrical as well as uh, motion components. Now really why then, uh, what, is the, what are the advantages presented by the software to SOLIDWORKS users? Obviously it's integrated inside CAD, we'll be showing you the product as well in a few minutes. Um, and so there is only one interface, there's only one really one software to learn if I may say. Um, handling of geometry is seamless, any geometry that is created inside SOLIDWORKS can be used for simulation. Um, so you can perform real-world uh, motion simulations because most uh, solenoids might contain springs and, and you've got to include them in your simulation. The springs can be linear, non-linear, any type of spring. You can have dampers, you can have connections, you can have basically a mechanism that's moving and, and, and SOLIDWORKS motion is powerful enough to be able to uh, deal with them. Um, then finally, uh, engineering results that, uh, that, that are of vital interest to electrical uh, and engineers and designers of solenoid, the forces back EMF, inductance, etc. These things uh, can all be acquired uh, in one position, in, in one location uh, using one product. So, and these are some of the advantages that EMS presents uh, in this field. Now with this, uh, you know, I'm going to quickly turn um, on to SOLIDWORKS uh, and EMS and show you a product demonstration on a SOLIDWORKS. Okay. What you see here uh, is a model of a solenoid. Uh, it was courtesy of one of our customers here who gave us this uh, model. I'm going to use that um, uh, for today's presentation. Let me take a sectional view of the solenoid so that we can understand uh, it uh, much more intimately and better. Um, so what you have is, is several different components here. You, you see there is the coil and the coil is just uh, a winding of uh, copper um, wires um, and then that's uh, represented just as a cylindrical annulus uh, um, 3D model in, in the program. Later we will look into how we can take the characteristics of wire and, and the current and the number of turns etc. So we have the, uh, the, the coil which is usually made of copper um, then you also have um, a movable part here. Um, this is really the plunger um, assembly. Uh, now in this movable part, uh, there is a plunger. Uh, there is a permanent magnet and, and also some kind of uh, another uh, geometry here. So there is a ferromagnetic substance and there is also some kind of a permanent magnet. Um, and that's uh, purely optional. Some solenoid designs have them, some of them don't in this case. Um, it does and I want to show you what happens if, if you have a permanent magnet as well as an electromagnet, EMS can deal with it. Um, in addition to it, uh, there is also a spring that is there uh, between, so let me just uh, skip over, go and, and show you the representation of a spring. 
So there is actually a spring that connects the movable part to the to the stationary part, and and, and that's mainly because once you remove the um, excitation uh, to latch back the solenoid back in position, uh, you have a spring, and that, that's very typical. Most solenoids have a spring. Um, solenoid uh, variety of some type will have a spring, and and we can deal with this as well. So. Um, so these are the components of the solenoid and obviously there is an outer shield in this case it's an open type of solenoid you can do a closed type as well but see it's not closed all over I have a, a sectional view you can see here that there is a partially open so it's probably a very simple type of solenoid that's available in the market um, an open type of solenoid um, by all means you can do a closed type as well but for this demonstration we will use this open type solenoid. All right. Uh, now, uh, now that you, we have uh, gone over the geometry, let's take a look at how one can do a simulation using this geometry. Okay. The first step in doing any electromagnetic simulation is to create what is called as a study. This is in EMS. We create a study, and there are several types of studies that are available in EMS. Okay. Mainly for solenoid applications, which have both. Uh, you can use magnetostatic if you have a DC excitation, which is probably most of the case. Um, you could use, uh, if you have AC excitation, you can use AC magnetic. Um, but most cases, uh, you could use transient magnetic. If your excitation is uh, non-DC and it's some kind of a pulse or something that varies as a function of time. So all of those kinds of excitations can actually be tackled using EMS. For this demonstration, we are going to use magnetostatic because we have a DC type of excitation. Okay. Uh, now, in terms of coupling the simulation, we have coupling to motion, which is probably the most uh, uh, commonly used coupling for solenoid applications. Um, you can as well have a coupling to a structural and coupling to thermal also. Um, uh, as as potential coupling uh, features in EMS. Okay, so once you create a study, EMS actually creates a study tree like what you see here. Now that contains materials, uh, coils, forces, and results. So these are the main components of an EMS study tree. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, how you would apply materials to your components in EMS. Now you can right click on the material folder here and say apply material. Now EMS takes you to the uh, material library that comes standard with this product. This is a fully customizable material library that uh, actually contains uh, some, uh, if I say, some nonlinear steels. For example, here um, you have uh, several steels um, in, our, uh, in our product and that actually contains the BH curve as well. Now, as I said, this is a fully customizable material library. As a result, you can actually create your own materials and create your own curves and use them for simulation. Um, so, and it contains uh, other materials as well. So, you would apply materials to the components. In this uh, case, I have um, uh, my uh, co coils made of copper. Uh, my ferromagnetic substance is made of, uh, the, the stationary part is made of cast iron. Um, also the movable parts as well. Uh, then what I have here is um, actually a plunger uh, and a permanent magnet. Now the permanent magnet uh, is is here and this is where I have to denote what is the north-south direction of a permanent magnet. So I can do that by just applying the coercivity direction and the coercivity direction here for this particular permanent magnet is along the y direction. And uh, actually, if I can, so this is along the y, global y direction is the uh, direction of coercivity for a permanent magnet. Um, you know, if you want to visualize the direction um, uh, properly, so I can go ahead and isolate just the component that's of interest to us. And uh, you can really see this arrow here, the blue arrow that gives you the direction of coercivity or the north-south direction of permanent magnet. So I could go ahead and exit the isolate uh, command. So you can isolate any geometry item and, and uh, either for viewing results or for uh, as far as viewing the geometry and the setup is concerned. 
Okay, once the uh, once the materials are applied, there's just one more thing that I would like to uh, tell you uh, is the concept of air. You know, um, now in electromagnetics, unlike uh, in pure um, mechanical problem, uh, the the field exists in the not just in the uh, in, in all the uh, components that you see here, but they also in in the air that is there in in inside the components as well as the outside. So. To be able to accurately capture the magnetic uh, uh, fields, etc., you have to model the air. And the air is also modeled as a SOLIDWORKS component, as you see here. And you can apply a material called air from our material library. Let me go ahead and hide the air. Okay. And let's uh, now uh, shift back to um, the next topic, which is defining a coil. Um, now, as I said before, this is a coil that's made of copper wires, and uh, but um, we represented that as just an annulus, um, like a solid geometry, uh, an annulus uh, here. So uh, inside the EMS program, we can tell the program really how what what's the mechanics of the coil. What is so we can tell the program what are the components that uh, comprise the coil. Uh, the program also talks about the phase on which uh, the current uh, enters, so basically uh, there is current in the, um, if, if I, the direction of the arrow shows the direction of my thumb if I use the right hand rule, so curl my uh, four um, fingers uh, and my thumb outside tells you what's the direction of the magnetic uh, flux, so that's uh, the direction of uh, current here. Um, and if you go to the general properties, uh, you can specify the wire gauge of the um, wires that make up the coil. And um, also you can specify the number of turns and the current. So this is where you would specify the nitty gritty details of a coil. Now once you uh, define a coil, uh, the next step is to request the program. So I'm going to go back to my um, section view here. Uh, we have to request the program to compute the force. So now um, we have um, requested the program to compute the force on the movable parts. And the movable parts contain um, uh, more than one uh, part here. So these are, as you see here, the blue blue things are the ones that are uh, that that have movement. So um, the objective is to compute the forces acting on the movable part. Okay. Um, now uh, this is uh, this is a study where I'm not coupled with motion. It's just a static position study. So at the first position, if I apply um, uh, an excitation or a DC current, what happens? What is the force acting on the mobile path? So that's what uh, this study will give me. And the next study, we will see how we can couple it with motion. Okay. Uh, now the results are organized. Uh, I've already run this simulation prior to this uh, demonstration here. So let's go ahead straight jumping to the results. As far as running the simulation is concerned, I would like to emphasize that the EMS product makes use of multiprocessor or multi-core uh, within a single machine. So if you have a machine with four or eight cores, we would make use of them in addition uh, to solve the problem. So actually the speed of solving is going to matter depending on the number of cores. So with, with today with multi-core processors uh, being the standard, you can actually solve these type of problems uh, quickly using a laptop or a desktop. Uh, now the, the force acting obviously is in the y direction as you see here is in the positive y direction is the force acting due to the um, um, excitation of the coil and, and all of these components have a force uh, that's close to about uh, uh, what you see here. This is the force acting um, due to this one. It's about 1.16 uh, newtons in the y direction. That's the force acting on the uh, movable components. Okay. Now in addition to the force acting on the movable components, one will be able to look at uh, the magnetic um, uh, results. So let's take a look at uh, section plot of a magnetic flux density. And uh, this is the uh, section plot of uh, magnetic flux density. So you can see here that you can see the value, the Tesla value and, and the corresponding locations in the model where, uh, where this value is reached. So that kind of helps you to give 
get an idea of um, where the high magnetic flux densities are, any kind of saturation happens in your in your steel and so on. Okay. Um, obviously, you can get the same thing, magnetic uh, field intensity in amps per meter. You can get a plot of that um, as well. Um, it's pr predominantly uh, focused around the air gaps here and also between dissimilar materials. As you see here, there is a um, permanent magnet along with uh, with miles, uh, with cast iron and hence um, this uh, change in the uh, field intensity. So, so you can study these things and uh, there are many post-processing features which I'm not going to dwell in here but uh, um, things that are very common to uh, finite element based uh, simulation uh, we offer them in EMS. Okay. Um, so, uh, without further ado, I'm going to just move on to the multiphysics problem. Now, we found out the force acting at the first position. Now, the whole idea is, well, okay, this force is going to create some kind of a movement, but but understand the problem. There is a spring, so is the, is the force powerful enough to move it against the spring and so on? So, that's really where the design um, comes into play. And so, uh, we go into the next study which is a motion study. Now, uh, as far as the motion study is concerned, um, some of the things that you, you need to do inside SOLIDWORKS motion is obviously is to uh, assign a spring. So we have assigned a spring component here um, between um, the two phases that you see here. Uh, that's That comprise the spring. Um, and the spring uh, is, is between these two phases. Um, it's a linear spring. Um, and also, uh, we set up a force um, that is acting uh, um, on the mobile components and this is a force that EMS gives you. So, notice here it's labeled as EMS force and basically it's a placeholder. So, you apply the force on any face of the mobile component and um, it's just taken a value of zero. That's the placeholder. That tells SOLIDWORKS that uh, an external force uh, from the EMS product is going to drive this motion. So as far as the motion setup is concerned, it's very simple. That's all you need to do um, as far as the motion setup is concerned. Uh, now we are ready to go into the second simulation. The first thing you notice the difference in the icons. Obviously, this is a coupled study that's coupled with motion. Uh, the materials remain the same. The excitation of the coil doesn't change. And the request to compute the forces acting on the movable part remains the same. The only difference here is um, it doesn't do a single simulation, but it actually does a coupled electromagnetic and motion through a series of time steps. And that can be visualized in the result table here. So when I double click on the result table, um, you get a lot more results than what we saw in the previous uh, this one. So you can, for example, you can plot how the center of mass of the movable components uh, vary as a function of time. So you can see here how that varies as a function of time. Now these values um, can actually be extracted out uh, through a list and you can export these values out. You can save it as Excel um, and, and bring it to Excel, MATLAB and other products. Uh, for, for that matter, any result that you see in EMS can be exported out as a text file or CSV file. Um, so so that's the center of mass. You can you can also plot the velocity. Uh, these are some of the motion characteristics and how they change um, with the motion of the solenoid. Uh, now, uh, as far as uh, the force is concerned, this is the force in the y direction. That's of interest to us. Um, that can be plotted here. And this is really the net force acting on the solenoid. And remember, uh, on the movable components, remember there was a spring involved here and this is the net force including the spring. And we, we, later I'll show you how to just extract the spring force and so on. So this is, as far as the engineer is concerned, this is the force of interest because this is really the net force that acts on the mobile parts uh, as a function of time. Um, as far as the uh, electrical quantities are concerned, the back EMF is computed at every time step and you can actually plot the back EMF as a function of time. Um, obviously, the shorter the time steps, the individual time steps, the more smoother curve you will get. So you can actually um, vary the number of uh, points in the iteration or, or the simulation or the, the I would say, the, the time delta t of motion 
uh, using SOLIDWORKS Motion. So all of those can actually be um, uh, manipulated. Um, and most of the engineering results are stored in this result um, table. Now let's take a look at some 3D plots. As before, uh, we can take a look at the magnetic flux density here. Uh, now this is the uh, magnetic flux density. Let me zoom in. Uh, so there is a huge difference between the previous study and this one. This being a motion study, this is obviously the first step that what we saw in the previous study as well. But uh, one of the things you can do now is I can animate this. And now um, you can actually see how uh, a coupled uh, motion and EMS type of simulation um, can can, can give you a visualization of what really happens as the plunger moves. So it's creating the frames for animation and uh, you can see uh, the model being animated. So sometimes over the uh, go-to meeting, I mean a meeting like this, an internet meeting, the animation might be slow um, to stream over the web, but I hope you are able to see that, um, see the plunger moving. Um, and as the plunger moves, you can see how the magnetic flux uh, distribution changes in the model and how the stationary component gets magnetized more and more as the gap between the um, uh, plunger and the stationary component uh, becomes smaller and so on. So, so basically this is uh, pretty much um, a coupled motion EMS type of, of a simulation. Now you can take a look at uh, the results. There are very many ways of taking a look at the results. You can actually do a 3D plot uh, section, ISO. ISO plot gives you um, regions in the model that is above or below a particular value um, and then you can do them as uh, line plots, uh, vector plots are also possible so you can actually create a 3D vector plot and where uh, you can study um, all the vectors, um, uh, the magnetic uh, flux density as vectors going through the model. So this is pretty much uh, a vector plot and you can vary the time step and you can see how those uh, change as a function of time um, and so on. So uh, there's a lot of um, uh, plotting options that uh, unfortunately due to the lack of time I'm not going to go over but uh, pretty much uh, a whole suite of uh, post-processing options are available in EMS. Okay. Um, there's one more thing uh, that I want to cover before um, I sign off today and get to the questions is the ability to create engineering reports. Now EMS actually as you notice here um, I have a folder called report and as I keep doing my simulation EMS automatically keeps track and creates a report for me so I can actually uh, take a look at uh, my report and this uh, is uh, is standard. Um, this is uh, a report created in Microsoft Word right inside SOLIDWORKS. So it is, uh, I can edit the same. So edit this report um, right from SOLIDWORKS. So that's really nice uh, way of uh, making sure that your engineering simulation is being uh, rep uh, reported and, and you're recording all the things that uh, you want to record um, here in this report. And it's also a nice way of collaboration or sharing designs between colleagues and uh, between companies uh, uh, so on. So it contains pretty much all the results, what is the force as a function of time um, and also the plots that you saw here, they're all there in the result uh, in the report. And this is uh, a word a report in the word format so it is stored appropriately in the same folder as your solid words can be accessed using the PDM system and so on. So uh, pretty much and, and you can also get it from inside the simulation. So the automatic report generation feature of EMS um, is something that uh, a lot of our customers value uh, as a way of uh, recording their progress in their simulation as well as collaboration is concerned. Um, so pretty much with this, uh, uh, you know, uh, we will um, take a look at uh, there's one more thing that I do want to show you. We can actually have what is called as a 2D plot. Um, a 2D plot is, is um, you can pick any two, comp any two points on the model um, and EMS can quickly generate um, uh, a straight line between the two points and 
and, and create uh, the variation of uh, the variation of uh, the 2d plot um, at any particular time step so you can actually uh, at any particular time step all all over a spectrum of time step all the time step you can actually see how the magnetic flux or any of these plot quantities vary as spatially as a function of distance from point one to point two so you can export points from solidworks predefined points or you can create them on the fly as i showed you so this is also another nice feature that is available um, in ems uh, with this, I'm going to just uh, jump back uh, to my presentation and um, we will just go over uh, a few more slides that I have before I get to the questions. Now, uh, we saw EMS. Now, it's probably time to take a look at what are the product bundles that we offer. Um, there are, as far as the company is concerned, we have two main products. One is EMS, other is HFWorks. HFWorks is our high frequency product mainly for RF and microwave design so really not the topic for today but nevertheless it's a good idea for you to know that we have a completely integrated RF and microwave simulator uh, 3D simulator inside SOLIDWORKS. Um, as far as EMS is concerned it's broken into two main um, uh, bundles which is the EMS professional and EMS premium. So the, um, the solvers that I showed you they are available in EMS Professional um, and EMS Premium contains some additional things. But in EMS Professional, we have the ability to couple uh, selectively. You can just choose coupling to motion. For example, if solenoid is all you're doing, you can do EMS Professional. You can couple to motion thermal structural. Uh, and EMS Premium uh, comes with uh, pretty much uh, everything that is there. All the couplings are available. In addition to it, a very powerful feature called uh, parameterization which uh, takes into view the SOLIDWORKS geometry uh, and the dimensions and you can vary these dimensions and study how the um, electromagnetic parameters change with the dimensions. So that, that is also involved uh, in included in EMS Premium. Okay. So these are some of the products and bundles and if you have more interest, uh, I think I encourage you to um, contact us and we'll go over these things, pricing, etc. Our sales team will be happy to do that. Uh, with this, uh, pretty much, and let me just recap, is to be able to do what I just showed you, everything that I showed you uh, in the demonstration today, basically to do any kind of solenoid simulation, what is that, what are the products do I need? Obviously, um, you need the SOLIDWORKS 3D CAD, which I'm hoping most people have are you, or are using. Um, you need a SOLIDWORKS motion simulation, which is actually included in SOLIDWORKS Premium or can be purchased uh, separately. In addition to it, you also would need EMS professional and EMS motion um, add-on. Okay, so uh, if you have the, if you have the first part, uh, then all you need is EMS professional plus EMS motion add-on or EMS premium. Um, again, I would like to reiterate the special offer that we have today. Um, um, we have a three thousand dollars off on the things that you need to do solenoid simulation, which has the EMS, just the magnetic solvers with motion and also the first year maintenance that gives you access to full technical support um, and also uh, all the software updates uh, during the calendar year um, or the year of your maintenance period um, will be available for you. Uh, obviously it's a time bound offer and uh, encourage you to contact us if you have uh, further interest uh, in pursuing uh, these softwares. Uh, with this I would like to thank you all for attending today's uh, webinar. Um, um, a few things that uh, that might be of interest to you is you can visit our website emworks.com for white papers and customer testimonials. Um, we have a plethora of YouTube videos, uh, I would say more than 30 or 40 videos and, and, and uh, pertaining to various topics. We are also starting uh, a special YouTube series on, 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 on uh, some training materials that we are going to provide free over the YouTube for you to learn the software and use it more. So I uh, encourage you to visit our YouTube channel. Uh, and finally for sales, you can contact sales at emworks.com or if you are in North America, you can use the 1-800 number here uh, or um, you can call our main number that's there in our website emworks.com. Okay. With this, I'm going to just uh, to, uh, take a look at some of the questions that have come and uh, I'm going to answer them in, in the order that they, uh, they were uh, typed in. Um, so, uh, let's see. Uh, 
So the first question is, can we get the copies of the slide? Obviously, the, um, the recording to this presentation will be sent to everybody who has registered. So the slides have been, um, will be there in the video. So um, you can actually view, the, view it from there. So we'll send you, maybe tomorrow, you'll get an email from us um, giving you the link to YouTube where you can access this uh, uh, presentation. Um, so you can see everything uh, there. Uh, there's a question which is related to multi-core processors. Uh, is there any additional fee to use the cores available? Um, actually, no. Um, no. We don't believe in that. The hardware is yours and uh, it's our duty to provide uh, the software that works to the best stability of all the hardware resources you have. So, no. Um, EMS, uh, all licenses of EMS comes uh, standard with uh, um, accessing all the cores that you have in the product. Um, so it's available to you uh, at no additional cost. Uh, so there is another question which asks about, um, this is more about SOLIDWORKS Motion. So um, how do I know if I have SOLIDWORKS Motion? Is SOLIDWORKS Motion uh, a requirement to do EMS? Uh, let me answer the second question first. Um, SOLIDWORKS Motion is not really a requirement to do EMS per se. You can have EMS just with the standard version of SOLIDWORKS, the basic version of SOLIDWORKS. You will be able to do a static type of EMS study, that, like the first study that we did. Um, but, but if you want to do a coupled motion study, which is probably more um, idealistic of a, of a solenoid, then um, you would need SOLIDWORKS motion. And uh, to obtain SOLIDWORKS motion, if you have SOLIDWORKS premium, you have SOLIDWORKS motion, so there is no problem. But um, should you need uh, to get SOLIDWORKS motion, you can contact your SOLIDWORKS reseller. Uh, so if there are more questions, uh, I would request you to type them in, in the chat window. So we'll, we'll spend another five minutes or so um, to answer any additional questions that may come up. 